What is good? Fresh crack, strong, quite strong. We're back. Got old Jay Waynes, but he's... That'll be my contribution. I think he's just going to be editing on the fly here, so the dude talking shit about the guy in some color, wrong colored hat, shut up. <laughs> he brought nothing to the show. Like, that's what you got out of this, is that I didn't say much? Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm over here editing while I'm doing it. You're welcome. We got Austin in the little box on your screen. Austin, what's up, we're buddy? We're back, baby. We're Big back. What's going on, man? How you doing? Oh, all you, all you know is we're ready to roll! Yeah. <laughs> ready to roll! Shout out, the goat. shout out, Stewie. shout out the goat. What are we doing here today, fellas? All right, today we're gonna uh, we're gonna try out running back cornerstones. We're gonna go top twelve because when you really get down to the nitty gritty of we're gonna and the the, the threshold here is running backs twenty five and under. Mm. Um, so guys like Josh Jacobs didn't quite make the cut, uh, but you know we're gonna go through here. We're gonna tear them up. I'm going to give you mine, then Austin will give you his. We'll go back and forth, and we'll, we'll chat it up a little bit. But try something different here, a little cornerstone action. So these are guys that you want to – the foundation, the building blocks of uh, of your dynasty team here. So, Austin, you got any comments before we, we roll on here? I'm ready, dude. Let's do it. Are you kicking things off? Yeah, I'll, I'll kick things off. And, I, you know, I, think, I don't think this is a surprise to anybody, um, and I think we're pretty much aligned here. Um, it's going – Bijan, Brees, and Jameer Gibbs. What do you what do you say is is the tier one for Austin Abbott? Two T's, two B's, two F's. So my tier one is identical. It's just you got one and two reversed for me, right? And I'm okay with what you have. Again, same. It's we do tiers, man, right? If you got a handful of players in a tier, you know, it's okay to to change them, switch them up, right? I do have Brees Hall as the RB one in Dynasty. Bijan is two and Jameer Gibbs is three for me. So they're just the best of the best when it comes to dynasty running backs, right? What is not to like about Brees Hall? What is not to like about Bijan and Jameer Gibbs, man? I mean, we saw two of these kids get drafted in the first round of this past draft. I know this 2024 class isn't nearly as exciting in terms of running backs, but I think there's going to be some nice dart throws, some some uh, maybe a little bit more than dart throws, I should say. I, I, I'm starting to come around on the 2024 running backs more than most people. What about you, Casey? Uh, yeah, I mean, I like the 2024 running backs. I'm not sure if we'll quite get one on the list, this list, although I have a sneaking suspicion one might one might get on there. Oh, uh, it's in the title. It better. <laughs> well, you know, question with rookies. <laughs> okay. <mark>? Okay. <laughs> But yeah, I think if Jonathan Brooks was was healthy, maybe he might even make a charge higher up on this list. So a little foreshadowing. But um, yeah, Bijan, Brees, Gibbs. There's really not much to say. I don't. You know, you could put those in any order that you want. For me, um, doesn't really matter. Um, I would probably go Bijan, Brees, Gibbs if we're ordering them in the tier. Um, you had Brees first, I, I think, right? So Correct. yeah, I mean, Brees just came off a season where. The Jets were absolute dog doo doo, and I don't know that we'll see the the targets be at ninety again, be the first overall in running backs, and the receptions be at seventy six again, uh, first overall for running backs, I believe. Uh, but you know, he's putting up missed tackles forced at, at a high level with with uh, being in the twelfth overall with forty six his runs over ten yards or more had twenty of those, even even with what he was working with, still two hundred and twenty two attempts, so that's mid pack. Um, 993 yards. It's 13th overall for Brees. Uh, still averaging a four five yards per attempt. That was 17th. And we know again, not a whole lot working right uh, for the Jets offensively, except for Brees Hall in the receiving game. So I don't know that we'll quite get back there. Uh, but we certainly, I think, we'll see the TD number rushing wise go from five to up if Aaron Rodgers is in there. Like I said, not sure we'll hit 90 targets again, but that's all right. Breakaway percentage was 40.5, number two overall. So you're just, you're seeing a lot of the elite markers. Brees is back, and this is coming from an ACL surgery mm. uh, season. Late. And you know, people were like, oh, you can't even draft him this year. I hope he drafted him this year. Um, and he crushed, he's, he's climbed all the way back up. He was RB4 and then RB8 in uh, points per game, 16.3. Bijan, maybe a yeah. little bit disappointment. Uh, but still coming through for you and a lot of the, uh, you know, numbers that you want to see his missed tackles force 52. That's tied for eighth runs over uh, 10 yards or more 30. So 
Um, that was tied for fourth breakaway percentage. Wasn't quite where you wanted it to, to be. It was only 26 overall, but rushed for 51 first downs. That was 13th overall. Still third in targets and 58 in receptions. Tied for sixth. His elusive rating, which is a PFF stat. Take that for what it is. He was 10th overall. Uh, 15 yards or more rushes. He had 10 of those. That was tied for 15th. Uh, but only 19th in overall attempt with 214. Just shy of 1,000 yards, 969 in his, in his uh, first season, his maiden voyage, if you will. And again, only four touchdowns for him. Uh, yards after contact, 663. That was 14th overall. So really coming in pretty strong. He was RB12 on the season. Uh, yeah, RB12 on the season, but RB21, I believe, in points per game at 13.8. So What I'm not, showing here, real quick, just just a mock draft that we recently did to show you where these guys fell. Not quite what you wanted from Bijan, uh, but you could see that all the parts and pieces were there. If he just he passes the eye test, which I know some of y'all don't like, uh, but some of the stuff he was doing out on the field was crazy. I and mean, his, you know, his Arthur Smith chains have been, you know, sort <laughs> of sort of released. And we're hoping that we're going to get a more McVay oriented uh, staff, which all signs point to uh, that is going to happen. So all signs going pointing up for Bijan. So not really scared of him and Gibbs. I mean, you know, some people were mad at people taking, you know, the Lions taking him in the first round or BMI or make up whatever reason you want. But I mean, when there's a guy on the field, on the NFL field, who's making guys in the NFL not look that fast and he's just the fastest guy on the field and elite, um, you know, I, I don't really know what else to to tell you there. That, that's what you want. It took seemed like the, the Lions slow played it. They figured out how to use him correctly. And by the end of the year, it was really humming. You, you do. You are probably slightly hamstrung by Montgomery but I think even coming into the season overall like out of Alabama you didn't think he was going to be on the level of Bijan and and Brees's you know workhorse style role but he can get it done with the explosive in the explosive manner that he runs and you know with you know the best offensive line Ben Johnson sticking around for another year helps Gibbs even more get acclimated yeah. and 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 you know the staff behind him to take over for Ben Johnson when he leaves is huge to get one more year of uh, of Ben Johnson in Detroit. So I don't think you can go wrong. I'd put Gibbs at the bot the, the the third on that list if we're ranking him in tier just because of the those other two guys aren't like Tyler Algier is not going to have a bearing on Bijan Robinson anymore. I don't believe, and nobody has a bearing on Brees Hall uh, kind of moving forward. Where Gibbs does a little bit, uh, yeah. but but it's I would almost rather him have that. And, um, yeah, and I don't mind what happened with Bijan necessarily. You know, slow right. play him a little bit. I mean, if you watched Bijan, then you know that that dude moves just like right. like different than everybody else. And then the, the the ball just sticks to him when you throw it to him. It's not even like it's effortless. Now I know he didn't oh, sure. catch the amount of balls that Brees did, but I mean, Jesus but still, eight, you know, fifty eight. That's yeah. I mean, you know, he's just a freak. Six overall, and so that's why I would have him number one overall too. But uh, should we move to tier two? Yeah, yeah. and anything. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just before we move to tier two, there's one final thing I want to mention about about Brees Hall. And dude, this is just crazy. Like, this truly shouldn't even be realistic. The fact that Brees Hall had nine total rushing attempts all season inside the 10 yard line, and he was able to be the RB4 in fantasy. Okay. For context, we have guys like Christian McCaffrey who had 65 carries inside the 10 yard <laughs> line. Uh, Strong stat. Pollard, Pollard had uh, 57, Mixon had 55. Again, Brees Hall had nine, right? So just a terrible offense by the New York Jets this year. Didn't matter for Brees Hall. This kid is my dynasty RB1. He's just, he's so special. He truly is, man. I love that the Jets finally, for the first time in the history of the New York Jets franchise, decided to get aggressive and trade up to, I think it was a 36th overall pick, like two years ago. Do they never trade up? They never get aggressive. And the fact that they finally did, I feel like the culture's kind of starting to change, right? We're hoping to see Aaron Rodgers healthy next year and take this team finally to the playoffs. But I guess just good for the Jets, man. Good for them for finally hitting on one prospect because it just feels like everything goes wrong. I mean, I'm from Jersey, man, and it's just, <laughs> thank God I am not a New York Jets fan. Not much better as a Colts fan, but yeah, fellas, I'm ready. Tier two. Casey, you want to, uh, you want sure. to start us? Sure, I'm 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 going with JT. He he makes he barely makes the cut in here. Uh, so I got Jonathan Taylor. I'm take, I'm putting Kyron Williams in here, and I'm going ET in tier two. Um, JT barely made it, so he was almost tier one for you. Is that correct? No, no, no. Age wise, age wise. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good clarification. Yeah, great clarification. 
Uh, but yeah, so that's my tier two. What do you, what do you got, Austin? So I don't know if you're with me on this. I actually almost had Jonathan Taylor in tier one. I, I have him in tier two. I'm with you, right? He is my dynasty running back four as well. I also have Travis Etienne as my dynasty RB five, right? He is the second and only other running back that I have in tier two. Um, but I, I'm with you, dude. Like I, I, I think your rankings are, are right there. Jonathan Taylor, who's definitely been on the decline, right? Like I know... He's now two years removed from his 1,800-plus rushing yard season, his 2,000-plus total yard season, 20-plus touchdowns. I mean, Jonathan Taylor was the dynasty running back one for a stretch, right? Those days are gone. I'm not sure we ever get back. I don't think we will, right? Um, But I do think that he's still in good company right again i have him as my dynasty running back four he just turned 25 years old we love his measurables we loved his production at wisconsin and we loved his nfl we love his nfl production again he is on the decline in terms of what what have you done for me lately but i and i don't think this is a hot take i think everybody watching this is going to agree with me he's going to bounce back this year man 2024 it's cool to be in on jonathan taylor you should be in on jonathan taylor right um if you faded him over the past year I mean, I guess congrats, you were right, but he was banged up. So were you really right? Like you can never bank on an injury, right? right. That's something that's difficult to predict unless you're Kadarius Tony or like J.K. Dobbins or whatever. But <laughs> don't uh, hopefully they're not watching the pod. Yeah, I mean, um, what but, what was good about the Colts is you saw the offensive line kind of bounce back. Yes, was was finally. something that you were a little a little concerned about where it was a strength for their minute there. And then it seemed to be like, eh, I don't know, but a big bounce back from Colts offensive line, I thought. You're, you're correct. And usually there's one squeaky wheel, right? With, with all the offensive linemen, there's one guy that was not the case for the Colts this year. And I think that's why they surprised a lot of teams. I think that's why they were able to be above 500 and, and practically, you know, right in the playoff conversation the yeah. whole year. They started the playoffs just, a week early. You know, that yeah, week 18 yeah. was like a play. It was the first playoff game. Yeah. So uh, that offensive line, you're hundred percent right. Casey, they were, they were great. Let's talk about Travis Etienne though, man. He's yeah. someone I, I feel like, I've always liked ETN, right? Even through the Liz Frank injury, I knew he was a good buy low and I loved him out of Clemson. I mean, how do you not like him Clemson. landing with, yeah, how do you not like him landing, you know, in Jacksonville with Trevor Lawrence, who, by the way, yes, I am still heavily in on. I know it's cool to fade T Law. He's never going to be good now. CJ Stroud's the new, you know, the new sheriff in town in the AFC South. It's okay, man. Trevor Lawrence is going to figure it out. He's going to go on to have a successful NFL career. And so will Travis Etienne, man. Etienne just had a great year, and he's low key already twenty five. That actually shocked me, dude. I kind of yeah. thought he was like he stuck around. I that think that just year. happened. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought he was like twenty three, like almost twenty four years old. I, I don't know. I was just a little surprised to see twenty five. I was like, damn, like all right, Etienne, you're uh, we're gonna have to put you in a senior citizen home. Yeah, you know, he wasn't an early declare, and then he missed the whole <laughs> first year of his rookie season. So all of a sudden, right. boom, right. Uh, but I think he did just turn twenty five. I can effort that. Yeah. Uh, but I, yeah, I'm a big fan of ETN, man. And Casey, it was uh, it was great to see you have him in tier two as well. Yeah, I mean, slightly down year on efficiency from ETN, but I mean, the Jaguars' offensive line talk going from Jack from from Indy to to Jacksonville was was not great. Um, and you know, I'd like to see some more better targets and receptions, a little more check down going from um, Trevor Lawrence to Which ETN. Which I'm surprised but, because he did that a shit ton in college, right. With the two of them, right, but still. 58 receptions that was tied for six most so you know a little bit of a shocking uh number there i thought it was just by by the game by game i was like man i'd like a little more but uh, might may have at least put together some of your fears as as him getting you know faded out a little bit uh with tank bigsby or whoever so etn just being fourth in attempts and 11th in yards but the you know the the yards per attempt going down to 3.8 this year i don't it wasn't on etn that was on a lot of you know bad situation bad line play yards per contact 766 i was fifth overall so pretty strong there and then uh breakaway percentage not quite where you wanted it to be at with with him this year 25.9 that was 19th overall so but 15 runs or more he was 15th so kind of middle of the pack there like i just want to see a little bit of those big play explosion plays coming back from et in this next year but he has all the all the juice all the parts and pieces and for not being a receiving back as some of you guys said you know he's uh seems to be decent at that uh moving forward so uh yeah got et in there and then i got i got kyron in there i'm just 
I just can't not put this guy. He's earned it to me. The Rams, I can't imagine they're going to go out and do anything crazy. They may add another guy. Well, there's not many guys getting the volume Kyron was getting. And he did all this on 12 games, man. He's RB5, 21.3 points per game. That was good for RB2, only behind CMC. Uh, still 13th in attempts, missing 12 games. So, again, if they bring in somebody, you could see that attempt number maybe tighten up a little bit. Obviously, we like the volume with him. Uh, but the TD number, I don't think goes anywhere. He's got He had 12 this year. Could have even had more if he would have played. Um, ran for a ton of first downs for them, 62. That was third overall. Um, only 47 targets, but still good enough. 32 receptions. You know, just checked a lot of boxes throughout the season. And, and really, it was more so like watching the Rams with him, watching the Rams without him. We're two totally different teams. Mm -hmm. um, and Kyron has just earned, earned the respect, still only 23 years old. Um, and I think when the Rams have a good running attack they're just a whole different ball game to deal with and that's a big part of what McVay likes to do we saw Todd Gurley then pay a big a big name um and him be really effective for them but kind of died really quickly I think Kyron uh gives him that safety net of hey we're not really paying this guy any any money we're going to stick with him for a little while he can get it done for us maybe they add another veteran or add another guy late in the uh in the draft here but I'm I don't I'm not concerned and I love the idea of Kyron moving forward here so Kyron Williams um, just mm -hmm. was a league winner and put up elite numbers this year uh, as far as fantasy production. So he goes in my tier two. Dude, I, I got to say, man, like I have Kyron in tier three and, you know, you're kind of convincing me to put him in tier two. I'm, I'm, I'm torn, right? So Kyron being placed on IR, it, the fact that he played 12 football games was on IR and still finished as the RB5, like it just, it doesn't happen. And right. the fact that it did happen is it's absurd, man. His his 17 game pace was literally over 1,900 total yards and 21 touchdowns. Kyron Williams, dude, 1,350, 1,350 total yards, 113 yards per game. I mean, he every time he stepped foot on the field, if I had to describe him in one word, it was safe, consistent, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, whatever word you want to use, man. He just he produced. I mean, I don't want to say he was like, you know, Christian McCaffrey safe, but like he wasn't like atrociously far from it, man. He just always produced. And if if I want to touch on Sean McVay real quick, we'll move on, dude. But like this, this guy just he knows if there's someone on this planet that knows how to utilize their players to their full potential. I swear to God, it is Sean McVay, man. Mm -hmm. Like it. He just he knows, man. He knows how to get every single ounce out of these players. And I don't doubt that Kyron's a good player without him. Right. He's proven to be. But I just I, I credit a lot of it to Sean McVay as well. I think sure. he knows how to. To, to utilize his players again to the best of their ability and uh Kyron's my dynasty RB9 in, in startups right so I'm very much in on him as well you're just you're just a little bit hotter but I like it dude I like it let's talk tier three all right if you had to sum up in three words would it be ready to roll <laughs> Kyron yeah oh yeah. yeah oh yeah it's pretty good man um, shout out to the goat the 101 the real 101 Stu Finer all right tier three Casey Who you yeah got? tier three I'm going uh Kenny three sticks and Achan, Achu, Ach, what is he going with these days? What? It's uh, a A chain. It's a, oh no, Achan, A chan. I think it is. It's definitely A chan. A chan. Yep, Jesus. nailed it. Um, Hit going, us in the comments. You know, <laughs> I'm just fucking with y'all. <laughs> um, so I got Kenny three sticks and no apostrophe or apostrophe. You better, you better fucking Defo say the baby. Okay. <laughs> Don't forget the F. I'm going A chain and. Uh, Kenny Walker here. Um, there's there's a little bit of unknown with both of them. I've got new regime uh, coming in in, in Seattle. Um, I love Kenny Walker. I think the I think he has the ability to be in tier two. Um, I think A chain certainly has the ability to be in A chain. Certainly has the ability to be in in tier two. Um, we just don't know what the parts and pieces around him are necessarily going to be moving forward. Most it's a little older. Uh, he's if you want to talk about efficiency, we gave give the Gibbs the nod. We just, I just got to see it for a little bit longer period of time on the field and we can give him, you know, he could easily, he could be up in a, in a tier one kind of guy mid season next year. Um, if, if he stays on the field and is healthy, he's certainly super duper efficient with, you know, 7.77 all yards of, per carry. Yeah. I, I don't have a, a, you know, all of the numbers for, um, a chain written down, you know, RB 24 on the season, uh, 17.8 points per game. That was good for RB five though. Um, so, 
The breakaway percentage, 54.0. That was good for number one. Uh, elusive rating, 153.5. Again, PFF stat, good for number one. Yards per contact after attempt. He didn't have a ton of attempts, obviously, just over 100. Or um, contact. You can't touch that, 5.12 was number one for that. Mm. His yards per attempt, 7.9, as you mentioned. That was good for number one. So just number one in a lot of stats. Very efficient. Tied for sixth with only 102 attempts on runs of 15 yards or more. Um, so all, all those are, are just are fantastic markers. We just need to put it together for a full season and not get bulldozed uh, by them drafting somebody else here in the second or third round. And uh, would I be terribly concerned about it? No. Does it take away the potential of some ceiling? I guess so. And, you know, we were a little worried about injury coming in and it, it it's not, not a concern at this point, but I'm not a guy who's going to shy away from him because of it. Like you said earlier, you can't bank on injury. He could never be injured again. Just well, was a little nicked here and there, which you didn't love. But what that, you that's saw on the field in tier one, right? If what, he didn't get hurt, he'd probably be in tier one of these running backs. Right. What I you mean, saw on the field, I, you know, I went back and forth between Walker and, and a chain, just Achan being in um, tier two as well. They're going to bring in somebody they, you know, but it's not going to be a high profile guy. They can, right. it, it's a McVeigh. It's a, it's a, uh, Shanahan system they don't they like a stable but like they got Monster and Wilson like right. those guys are good enough most and most it's awesome 30 when healthy too though sure you know, but just right. so you know w- there could be a, another guy in the fold it's just but it's a Aiken little unclear has but the role and if sure. he's healthy and he's average he's that efficient just look at what most did this year I mean if you could Incredible. just if, if you hand a little Give bit a of little bit most hurts to H8 right. and then on top of what he I mean it's it's crazy so yeah gotta put some respect on his name even though I'm always fucking around with it yeah you put no uh, respect on his name. I do respect his name Devon <laughs> Devon e. Chan. Uh so Austin who you got in the in the tier three yeah man this is uh I, I guess we'll get I'll get back to HN in a minute that I just want to say real quick he had to be the most difficult running back for me to rank like mm. without question right I I wholeheartedly agree that he could have been tier one had he stayed healthy all year he also you know in my rankings, I actually, ha- I, I don't mean to tell a little bit too That's much, okay. and we'll get into it. But he was my, he is my RB eleven, so I am notably lower. lower on him, right? But That's all right. Dude, what makes again, the game go, so, baby. That's what makes right, the game go. Right, so difficult for me to to rank him. I, I get it. Uh, for tier three, I have Ken Walker as my RB six, leading tier three. Love Ken Walker, man. Feel like it's, I feel like people kind of forgot who Ken Walker mm. is, man. Like people, dirty. Yeah, dude, it, it's crazy how quick the running back landscape changes. It's like, you, what have you done for me lately? Like, I understand it's it's like that across the board with all positions, but I swear to God, running backs more than anything, man. It's like they, they fluctuate like penny stocks, right? Mm-hmm. Would you agree? Oh, it's, sure. It's wild. hundred um, percent. So I'm I'm absolutely in on Kent Walker. I don't care. Uh, I've seen enough production from him in college and in the NFL. Love his age. Love his size. Just there's so much to like about Ken Walker, dude. And I think Houdini. I don't. You know, mm. it's interesting to me with Pete Carroll the departure. I don't necessarily know how that affects Ken Walker moving forward. I have to dive into it a little bit more. I just know that I like the prospect and I like the player. I like what Ken Walker's done. Uh, let's talk about my next running back in tier three is Kyron Williams. We touched on him before. Dude, Kyron's a dog. I mean, mm. again, like there's there's not a whole lot to dislike. And and if there is an outlier in this in our rankings today, the top twelve, it's Kyron Williams, right? It's absolutely mm-hmm. Kyron Williams, right? If if it's because of the lack of production early in his career, if it's because of his measurables, right, being sub 200, 194 pounds, five nine. Not the biggest dude, but it's okay, clearly, right? I, again, we, we've talked about this before. The NFL is kind of transitioning to like a little bit of a smaller lead, or there's some positions where you can now get away with being a little bit smaller and just being faster, right? And Kyron's mm-hmm. clearly got the talent. The next running back I have, and this surprised me, man. Like, I like this guy coming in. I was probably a little bit more bullish on Rashad White, my RB8. Dude, he just had such a fantastic campaign, right? If I'll tell you Four what, four. I was telling everybody this offseason to buy Rashad White to draft him and then when it finally rolled around my rookie drafts or I'm sorry my uh, redraft leagues dude I I just I kept looking at Rashad in in all of my leagues and I just couldn't pull trigger right like I'm telling everybody this great great advice 
I can't even take my own advice. And <laughs> it ended up costing me because he was just phenomenal. He was phenomenal this season, right? I mean, Rashad White looked so good. That's the thing, dude. Not only were his numbers good, he looked so good. Yeah. Right? So, That's why you can't uh, be getting and, high on your own supply. <laughs> <laughs> and the final player I will talk about for Tier 3, my RB9, is James Cook, man. Here's someone who I wasn't quite as bullish, you know, heading into the season. And and James Cook, dude, he, he had, yeah, he was a little up and down, right? He, he definitely wasn't, like, phenomenal from start to finish this season. Uh, he was wildly efficient. He had, like, 5.77 uh, yards per carry his first season in the NFL. And then this year, 4.85 yards per carry, which was eighth. I mean, you know, we're talking minimum 90-plus attempts. He he got the job done, man. He, he's always been efficient these two seasons. Um, RB3 and run blocking rate, you love to see because that will generally lead to more volume. He was RB11 in true yards per carry, RB5 in yards per touch. Um, and his advanced receiving metrics were great, dude. Like he was RB2 in yards per reception, RB6 in yards per route run. Shout out yards per route run. Everybody loves it. I don't know why. Probably a little overrated. Yeah, I said it. I like uh, you. <laughs> the uh, the RB3 in rushing yards, dude, cracked, cracked a thousand yards. You love to see it. RB7 in receiving yards. Uh... I mean, dude, over 1,500 total yards, RB2 in total yards. We would like to see more positive regression in the touchdown department. I think that's inevitable heading into 2024. Um, but but final thing I will say before we move on, James Cook putting up 1,500 plus yards in just his second season, just so impressive, right? And, and being healthy, here's another thing, being healthy in 33 out of 33 career games to kick off his career, I, I mean, I applaud him, man. That That's what we love to see. Awesome. So shout out to James Cook. You said uh, you said regression. I, I added a new feature to the show here. Uh, you got to drink. drink. When, um, <laughs> we got a whole board get... full of trigger words, and we need to start, we need to start living up to it, okay? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, I, I'll, be, uh, I'll be drunk. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm correlation. Gonna, <laughs> I'll, throw, I'll throw my last tier out here to round out this 12. Um and much of the same guys that you had in there, I'm going uh, James White or uh, Rashad White, James Cook. I'm throwing Tajay Spears in there, and I'm going Isaiah Ooh. Pacheco. And I think Ooh. I think we could throw Brooks in there, but that would be 13 uh, as far as you know being. I think the RB one of this class just coming off an ACL, if not hurt, maybe would have been a little higher. Um, so I actually would would potentially put all of those guys in one tier. He made the graphic a little early while I was doing Ugh. things, but it's fine. It's fine. I'm not upset about it. Um, but I had initially Pacheco in, in with the four uh, in tier four uh, and then kind of moved him down. And then I was like, ah, yeah, put him back up in there. And then maybe we could throw Brooks in. But uh, with so, rookies, with rookies. Um, so you with touched rookies. on you touched on Rashad White. You, you hit a hit a bunch of good stats. I was. I was saying, hey, I'm fine with drafting him, but sell him in season when he's doing well. I didn't expect the Bucks to be where they were. Um, now, obviously, I don't think they thought that they were going to bring in Canales and then lose him in a season. Um, as far as kind of making that offense tick, the Baker reclamation process project, I don't believe there's been a new OC named uh, in Tampa. Um, but... We, we saw some strength out of the offensive line, some consistency. Maybe they draft another guy, bulk, bolster that up a little bit. Rashad White, not the strongest between the tackle runner. Never was my favorite, but an extremely, extremely good receiving back. Uh, player profiler, actually, because I'm here now, just has it on David Johnson, uh, which, you know, I, I could I could, I could could fucks with that a little bit. Um, the, the receiving game is, Settle down. is outstanding. Um, you, you stated some of it already. The target share, he was... 13th his routes run number two overall route participation third uh yards per reception fifth what was his over expected uh so he just he absolutely slayed it through this season i can't imagine i thought that they would bring in somebody else because that hey i I wasn't sure of their production but i knew the receiving would be good and hey he could be your third down guy i think he's pretty much earned it to this point he's staying up there i'm sure they will bring in somebody else because they really struggled to find another guy in there uh with uh, who, who was uh, Chase uh, Edmonds? Chase Edmonds and you know Keyshawn Vaughn. Shout out to some guy from a long time ago that <laughs> totally said we were idiots because he's he was good. Um, but anyway, Rashad White in there. I don't think he's going anywhere. And I was wrong on having to sell Rashad White. Now, if you want to get out, I, I can't. I can't 
necessarily blame you. I think you can still get something good for him, but I'm not scared to hang on to him for another season. Mm-hmm. I think the Bucks trending trending in a, in a much better direction, much faster than than I initially thought here. So we will see how Canales affects them, obviously going in division over to the Panthers. Uh, but that was a really, really strong showing for White um, and outstanding in the passing game. Like I said, James Cook, you touched on him a bunch. Got him in here. For me, it just comes down to the usage of James Cook every single week being what you want him to be, to be the reliable asset that he's clearly good. If you give him the ball, he does well with it. He put up some good numbers. There's just, you know, some volatility in the game there that you don't like to see, but a a really, really solid player here. If again, if you wanted to get out, I can't begrudge you for it, but I'm not scared to go into the season with James Cook and then Spears in here for me. It's just a projection of moving forward. We're bringing in Brian Callahan from he sells brake pads, you know. <laughs> it's puts, Tommy puts, Callahan puts the, puts the guarantee on the box and you know labels it. P, what was it? If you want to take a shit in a box and label it guaranteed, I got spare time. <laughs> uh, but you know, if you want to buy a quality brake pad from me, you know that's it. But I don't know a ton about Callahan except I did go through and make some notes on kind of what to expect from offense next year. We're kind of we went from a Vrabel system who at times could be a bit of a barbaric offense, but I support what Vrabel was doing cuz he was zigging when everybody else was zagging and they had the guy to do it with. Um and then offensive line fell apart, couldn't get the quarterback right, but you know, some good news for Levis in here. Callahan's reputation going all the way back to Denver with Peyton Manning in the Super Bowl, so I guess Peyton kind of vouched for him to help him get this job with some of the stuff I was reading, but work with Peyton Manning in Denver, work with Stafford in Detroit, work with Derek Carr when he put up a good season and John Gruden, who's a good offensive mind with whatever you think about Gruden. And then obviously develop, help develop Burrow along the way here and put Jake Browning in good position this year to be, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, pretty solid. He's worked with some of the, some really good wide receivers through there as well. Uh, so again, I think we're, this is um, a guy who's touched a lot of different, really good quarterbacks and been around them. So maybe a good thing for Levis potentially, if they don't draft somebody, they got to get that old line, right. Uh, But Taji Spears coming in 57 receptions on 67 targets his rookie year um, and 15th of yards uh, per contact uh, per attempt at 3.15 number five and elusive rating. So just really, really good markers on the little bit of work that Taji had. And then just again, the eye test of no ACLs uh, out there just, taken other people's ACLs so <laughs> or ankles yeah. right um, so I I'm I'm projecting to, I think they will bring in somebody else I can't imagine he's gonna have this all to himself but I think he's the lead dog next year and you know obviously coming from Cincinnati that's a that's a McVeigh style tree system Mixon's had pretty good success in there so you know not scared of the running back in that position and I think Spears is primed and ready to go they don't have to fret too much they can bring in some some competition behind them but he looks like the guy primed and ready to go so I threw I threw Spears in there little gotta love Pacheco at this point gotta stop Peyton and then John Brooks I think is if wasn't hurt maybe could even be in in tier three here uh looks Looks, looks really good, was behind Bijan, was putting up numbers behind Bijan, and then was having an excellent season uh, coming in, and then obviously a bummer of an ACL. So, uh, Austin, I'll give you the floor to wrap this up. Wow, dude. I uh, I didn't expect to see Tajay here, but I love it. I, I almost feel like I'm silly. Like, I should have added Tajay, but uh, <laughs> that that surprised me. Um, I like it, dude. Uh, I mean, there, there's a lot to like about Tajay, right? 22 years old. Derrick Henry's a free agent. Like, he literally was on the mic, was like, fellas, I'm out of here. Like, yeah. That was that was wild. I didn't, ex- you know, I was never anticipating to see that. Um you know, he's day two pick, right? Or early or mid third round. Uh, mm-hmm. Tajay Spears got a lot to like, dude. And he was just wildly efficient. He was, he, he thrived in target share. He, there's so many metrics. Um, he just, he has great patience. You know, he's, he runs aggressive. He put up almost 1600 rushing yards his final season at Tulane, like 6.9 mm. yards per carry. I mean, this kid's good. Like he's, he's absolutely good, but dude, you are bullish on him. And like, you were, you were yeah, like conducting the train. Yeah. 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 No, dude, I, I like it though. That's bold. I, uh, I didn't, I, d- I didn't anticipate seeing him here, but I'm, I'm cool with it. Um, I'm got, I got to wrap it up, dude. We're talking tier four. I got three guys. I have Jonathan Brooks as my dynasty RB10 here. I have nice. Devon Achan as RB11 and DeAndre Swift as RB12. Ooh, so Got the Swifty in there. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I have to tag them jo- in this. 
I guess we'll, I'll, yeah, right, dude. I'll, I'll, I'll start yapping about uh, Jonathan Brooks real quick. We'll, uh, we'll touch on a few things. So he would have been my RB2 in this class, in the 2024 class. But shout out to Trevion Henderson, man. He said, I'm going back. I like that NIL money. I like it. He's, he's staying, and which was, you know, a bummer for the dynasty fantasy community, but it is what it is. So that leaves Jonathan Brooks as my dynasty RB1 in the 2024 class. Uh, what matters most, man, he had eight straight games of 98 plus rushing yards. Jonathan Brooks at his 241 yards, two touchdowns against Kansas. Like he's got that big upside. He can just single handedly just take over games. And he missed four games, by the way, and still had over 1,400 total yards, right? So he was not only averaging 114 rushing yards per game, but he was also an invaluable leader for Texas, right? There was just a huge void that was left when he went down with the torn ACL. I love Jonathan Brooks. He's mm. he's got I, I'm assuming like close to four four nine speed. That's what that's what I've seen, and that's kind of what I'm anticipating, man. Like he's not the fastest dude, but he definitely has real NFL speed for a running back. And uh, I just thought he was flexible. He transitioned extremely well in the screen game. I I love the tape, dude. And again, for what it's worth, Bijan Robinson scored a touchdown every sixteen point three carries. At Texas, Jonathan Brooks scored a touchdown every 14.9 carries at Texas. Again, just for what it's worth, just giving y'all more stats, more context, this kid can play, okay? Uh, next running back I want to talk about is Devon Achan. So, again, Casey, you touched on it earlier, but he's one of the most difficult players, most difficult, not only running back, but players in all of Dynasty to rank, right? I, I think that he's, I think polarizing is the right word to use. I think we're starting to see some people get a little bit lower on him, right? I understand he had that crazy hot start, that 50 plus point performance, but I think that there were a lot of people that were a little discouraged by maybe even his size and his durability, right? Cause mm -hmm. we saw him go down. I sure. think it was three different times a season, one of them being on IR. Um, but, it, but I will say that he is, I wouldn't call him a one trick pony. I think he's more than just blazing four point, uh, four, three, two speed. Uh, in fact, he ranked fourth in juke rate. You'll love to see it. He's elusive. He's efficient. And especially considering the fact that he ranked second in true yards per carry. Again, something that we love to see. And a lot of RB1 overall finishes in terms of like advanced stats and metrics, like breakaway run rate, number one, run block rating, number one, and uh, fantasy points per opportunity. That matters for us, fellas, mm -hmm. right? Like we love to see it. Uh, again, uh, speed's never been the issue for Devon Achan. And his collegiate production... It was fine, right? It it, it it was good. Like I was I was happy with it. His NFL production having eight hundred rushing yards, again, that was that was wildly impressive considering the fact that he had only played in over fifty percent of snaps in four of eleven games, right? Like let yeah. that sink in, man. Right. And the fact that he was like relatively close to a thousand rushing yards. Uh, and he would have been there easy if he sure. was healthier. Uh RB five in, in fantasy points per game, seventeen point three. Great metric. Points look, I'll tell you what, man. Points per game matters to me. Out of sure. all the metrics, out of all the silly numbers, like yards per outrun, whatever the hell we're yapping about, if there's one thing that matters, I just want to say that points per game is, is definitely in that conversation. It's up there, right? Uh, I think it's one of the more accurate indicators. And and the final thing I will say about HN is he's going to have a solid future. Miami just needs to keep him fresh, and they just have to continue to utilize HN wisely like they did in 2023, right? And I like this kid. I think he's going to go on to have a successful career. I'm just not quite as bullish as you are, Casey. And the final guy I will touch about today in Tier 4 is DeAndre Swift. Uh Oh man, I've kind of gone back and forth with DeAndre yeah, Swift. I, I had for, him just outside, for, yeah. But I, I yeah. you know, there's there's the talents there. Just where where is he going to be? Yeah. What's he going to be? You know, Pacheco yep. seems so like a little safer. You know, I, I I don't disagree. I mean, clearly I do disagree here, but I, I don't <laughs> disagree with you. Like like Swift is again. I'll use the word. But you can't argue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I, I guess high. I'll use the word polarizing again because I think. There are some people that are kind of like, hey, man, like I'm kind of back in on Swift. But then again, he's a free agent, man. He was on like a one year prove it deal essentially with Philly. Where do you think he's going to end up? I don't know. I mean, I, if, he, if he signs a reasonable deal, I think he could go back to Philly. I, I wouldn't mind seeing him back there. They just they kind of I felt like got away from the run game a little bit and got away from him at times. And then they weren't as efficient running the ball at certain points of this season. So I wouldn't mind seeing him going back to the Eagles, really. But, I, you know, other than that, I, I really haven't put a ton of thought into it, but 
that would be ideal for me. I'd like to see him operate with Kellen Moore. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, man, he did have a career year, right? And, and I'll tell you what, I think that Swift's upside, I, I, we, Casey, we talked about this a while ago. I still don't think we've seen 100% of who DeAndre Swift is. Like, I think that there's a higher, more efficient, just better, more productive version of him out there. And he has not put together that season yet. And here we are, like, he's heading into year five now. Like, are we going to see it? There's definitely a chance. But again, man, he had a career year. Like, he'd never hit 650 rushing yards in his career until this year and he cracked a thousand. So like, that's the leap we want to see. And he was, he was hell of a, you know, hell efficient. Like he had 4.58 yards per kiss. <laughs> I mean, dude, he, he was good. Like he was a good player this year. There's, there's no doubting it. You know, uh, receptions have never been an issue for him. So it, it's interesting, man. He's, he's, uh, I almost left him out here. Uh, but, but I, I stuck him in, man. He's he's still just 25 years old, and uh, I, I I like him for what he is. Yeah, no, I mean I, I I considered him here. I just left him left him out for for some reasons that, like you stated, we we haven't quite seen him put it all together. We don't exactly know where he's going to be. I, if he gets cheap enough, I'd buy him. As we're doing these startups, uh, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Uh, you know, we're going to be going live and doing a bunch of startups and we're going to be doing startups in the Patreon. So it'll be interesting to see where his value kind of uh, settles out here pre uh, and post free agency. Uh, but he seems like there's there's probably some decent value in, in DeAndre Swift right now to be buying. Um, but I, I yeah, left him outside 12, my tears. Yeah, went 12, six in this month. Yeah, kind of forgotten right now a little bit. But there yeah. is the upside there. And, you know, you've seen it in parts and pieces throughout his career. Just never. Uh, you know, a whole a whole season of damn every game from DeAndre Swift, he's doing something awesome. Uh, he he does just enough to right. keep you hanging on, right? Mm -hmm. And he he is explosive and he can catch. And if he was utilized more in that manner, it would be incredible. But they said a, he had a career year in attempts for sure. He over two hundred. He didn't even ever get close to that before this year, which I thought was interesting. But yeah, so yeah, I like Swift. Could be a nice buy this off season for for some cheap RB production, uh, but. Uh, that'll wrap up the top 12 RB cornerstones uh, with rookies. We can say that declarative at mm. the end of this without with rookies. Mm. Uh, so be sure to like, subscribe, comment below what you like, what you don't like, all that jazz, which is kind of, I think, why you do this stuff. Uh, but the idea of this is some younger guys that you can kind of build around, especially from the RB perspective. We'll be doing this with wide receivers, and we, we did some rankings, and going to be all sorts of rankings, all sorts of mock drafts. We're going to be heavy in the rookies, all sorts of rookie drafts, all sorts of content of every which way in the fantasy football space coming right at you with the FFD, so keep it locked and loaded here. And again, that subscribe button is your friend. Make uh, sure you go follow our man Austin Abbott, FF. Two B's, two T's, two F's. Uh, great Twitter follow. Uh, give my man some love over there. Yeah. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Peace.